All right, so we're back. We're going to, uh, hopefully me clapping my hands wasn't too loud for you. We're going to talk about some Angular, so probably not a big surprise. That's what we've been talking about the last 30 or so videos, probably. And if you like this kind of stuff, don't forget to hit subscribe. We're getting close to 1,000. I really do appreciate all of you. And today we're going to talk about something besides Angular material stuff, and it's actually going to tie in, I think, I'm going to make a video after this talking about filtering a table, something I didn't remember to touch upon. And then I revisited something I wrote at work, and I'm like, oh, I use this. I probably should share that with you. So if you like this, help me get close to 1,000. Really do appreciate it, and I appreciate you. We're going to touch upon getters and setters and Angular and TypeScript and why they might be useful to you and how we're going to implement those in the future. So this will probably be like a two-part uh, video series, I guess. And I'm pretty exhausted today. I know it's Monday. I got my coffee pretty late for coffee for me. So hopefully I don't stay up too late. And hopefully you have some coffee too. That way we can get through this with a smile on our face. So let's not waste any more time. Let's just get into it. I want to talk about getters and setters and how you can use them in Angular and TypeScript. So the first thing I did before I forget is I brought in this forms module from Angular slash forms and then added it, of course, to the imports array or list in our app module TypeScript. And the reason I'm going to include that is because I plan to put an input tag in our HTML and uh, we're going to ask for some user input. So getters and setters. I cleared most of this class, well actually all of this class, so it's all fresh. So the idea of getters or setters, what we've been doing is we have a property and let's say I just call this like sentence and it's of type string and that's it. And maybe I reference this down in a method in this class and I say, yeah, this dot sentence uh, is going to be equal to this. And then maybe I'll bind it in the HTML and that's it. If the sentence changes in the HTML and the input, if I have an input and I bound it to that property, uh, then it'll just change sentence. But maybe we want to do more than that. Maybe whenever something's changed, like this string by an input by user, every time it's changed, we want to do something. Maybe we want to log it um, because we're that scrutinous with our logging, or maybe we want to run some kind of method that's going to take in the sentence and do something with it. Who knows? There could be a plethora of different reasons you'd want to do this. And to ensure that that happens every time, uh, you can use something called a getter and a setter. And you can set that up by making sentence actually private. So if we say private underscore sentence, because now that it's uh, uh, private, we're going to preface it with an underscore. And I'm going to say it's of type string. And now what I can do, and you've probably done this before with other programming um, languages with classes, is to set getters and setters. At least I did in my college years with C++. We're going to s create these getter and setter methods in our class. And a getter just means give me what is the value of this private property. And a setter is, hey, set this private property equal to this. So let's first just define the get. And we're going to say get and then sentence and then open and closed uh, parentheses because we're not going to accept anything. And then we're just going to put open and close curly braces. And then all our getter is going to do, it's going to return this dot underscore sentence, the private variable or the private uh, property. Okay. And then our setter is going to be very similar set and then sentence without the underscore. And we're actually going to pass in something. And I'm just going to call this value of type string. And what I want to do is I want to set this dot underscore sentence equal to value. So hopefully you see the difference in naming convention for our getter and setter. We're ignoring the underscore. We're just naming it uh, what it would be without the underscore. And the set, we're passing in a value. The get, we're not. We're just returning this dot underscore sentence. So you might look at this and you'll be like, why? Why do this? Why why would this be necessary? Well, like I said before, maybe, I don't know, you want to do something besides just setting this private property. Maybe you want to also um, write some kind of log. And I guess before I do that, I'm going to create 
another method and it's going to be called like write log and um, we'll say log of type string and we'll say console dot log and we'll pass in this log into uh, into the log method here. So now whenever it's set, I can also take that value that we're setting sentence equal to and say this dot write log and pass in value. And this will make more sense in the next video uh, when we do filtering with tables. And what we'll end up doing is we'll filter out the data of the table based on a search that the user starts typing. So whenever he starts typing, that's when the setter will be called. And then every time the setter is called, it will filter out the data of the table to match what he's writing, he or she. But in this case, we're doing something very simple. Um, we're not only setting the value of sentence equal to the value passed in, but we're also writing to the log just to show that you can do both of these things when setting the value. So let's save it and it'll compile. And then the next thing we want to do is put an input tag in our HTML. It's going to be of type text. And then we're going to add the directive um, ng model in the two way data binding. So ng model, and that's where the forms module comes into play. And we're going to set the binding equal to the value of sentence. And notice when I say, hey, set the bind equal to sentence, I'm not using the underscore and that's because it's private and we want to use that setter. And that setter uh, is going to be used now when we don't use the underscore. So let's save this and let's see it in action. Maybe it'll make more sense um, if you're confused. So let's look at it. I'll bring up localhost 4200 here. And let me also bring up the developer console just so we can see the logs as it's writing. So notice if I type in A, all of a sudden, a appears. Well, wow, how did that happen? Well, let's think about it. This input, it's bound to the sentence property. But wait, um, there isn't a sentence property. However, there is a sentence setter. So it's like, okay, I'll use that. And then I'll just run whatever's in this setter. So first it sets the underscore sentence equal to value. And then it writes the log of what's passed, which is A in our case. And every time we type and change that value, so A, B, C, D, E, F, you can notice a new log appears because we're setting this value each time um, we call or we write to this input. So here's what I want to do. I want to have a table under this. And as the user starts typing in here, um, it will start to filter. So if the user puts a T, then every column with a T in it will show and nothing more. It'll filter out the rest. If it doesn't contain a T, then it'll go bye bye. And then TR, and it'll filter out some more for anything with a T and an R in it. And then U, and then C and K. And it's sooner or later, right, it's just going to sh end up showing trucks in the table. And that's just an example. Um, I don't know if we'll type out different cars and put them into our table or not, but I guess we'll find out. So that's setters and getters in a nutshell. That's how you can set them up and use them. And in the next video, like I said, we're just going to uh, add it to a Angular material table to add some filtering. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next one.